Hey, who's working on the Thunder Tank? Here's your look at the Super 7 Thundercats Ultimates Panthro. Panthro is the symbol of Thundercats' strength and wisdom and pilot of all the Thundercats vehicles. An unequaled master of the martial arts, meditation, and mechanics, he is strong, brilliant, and funny. Though his use of nunchucks make him a deadly adversary, Panthro's enemies fear and respect him. We'll be putting Panthro through the review, but before we do, let me just wipe away the spit. I'm sorry for spitting all over you guys. Okay, let's grab the ruler just to see how tall Panthro stands. The figure's six and three quarters of an inch, or about 17 centimeters tall. Now, for me at least, this is a second helping of Panthro, having already picked up in the years prior the Maddie Collector version of Panthro, which we can actually bring in now for comparisons. I actually expected Panther to have more of the similarities between the original Maddie Collector release and what Super 7 put out, but uh, actually there are some notable differences, more so in his face. We're going to talk more about that in a second. It seems also humbled reviewer behind the camera. Thank you for acknowledging my humbleage. You freed up a little bit of space next to Panther on the other side. What's that there for? That's there for to bring in the Lino, a figure that we've already just recently looked at here on this channel. Thank you for watching that, by the way. You can see that in this case, and it may just be also the additional frock. Is that the hair? Is that what you call it? Anyways, you can see that Lino is quite taller than Panther. And I think a lot of it is just because of Lino's hair. He loves his Vidal Sassoon. The rest of his body, though, seems to be similar, if not fact that they've actually shared the exact same parts, torso, arms, and legs. As for the figure's accessories, Panther does pretty good for himself. We're going to have a look at those individually. Starting things first, the one accessory that was slightly warped when I took it out of this plastic prison. This is the Kia Thundera. It's nicely molded to the credit of Super 7. It would be a very small task, a very small task to be able to go in there and paint that little emblem of the cat's logo. They have, although I think that the logo itself, and I'm not going to stickle or I'm not going to be a stickler when it comes to small accessories like this, but it does seem like the logo is maybe just a little bit too big for the actual handle of the key. The key is made of a very soft plastic and one probably reasons why it was so bent and warped when it kind of looked like this a little bit. I had to take a hairdryer and run a few passes just to soften that up a little bit. It does come in clear with the key of Thunder and actually it's nicely done and finished on both the sides. I'm going to put that to the side because I know I'm, I know I'm going to lose it. One other thing that comes also included with this, and this is interesting, is he comes included with the Thundrometer. Try saying that seven times fast. Why am I saying seven times fast? Thundrometer, 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 Thundrometer. That's only about five. We're going to bring in the original one that came included. I think the first uh, Panthro did come included with this one. And yeah, it doesn't look like it's that much different between the two. Although Super 7's is a lighter coloring of gray. The original Matty Collector release, though, was a darker color of gray. I'm already worrying I'm going to drop these onto the floor. You worry about things, that's when you make things a reality. The key is not to worry. I'm still certain I'm going to lose these, though. I'm going to put the Thundrometers to the side. The figure also comes included with a detonator. I'm not sure exactly what he's detonating, but if he ever needs to have a detonating tool readily on the available, he does have one. Uh, it, as you can see, it's molded in a, in a plastic, a gray, a gray plastic. It's slightly warped on the handle portion because, again, it's the softer plastic that they use. You can see that there's some nice little screws on the back there, a little switch on the side. Ooh, careful! We don't want to blow this whole studio until kingdom come. Careful, pr press that switch. And there's also a little view, or view uh, readout display, although there's nothing really on the screen. A little detonator. Carefully, carefully putting that to the side. Figure also comes included with a wrench. And I guess while we're also at it, seeing these are fixing tools after all, it comes included with a welding gun. I don't believe the welding gun has any paint to it, so you can correct me if I'm wrong if you want. It looks like it's all, all just really been molded in purple plastic, and then there's also a wrench. The wrench is nicely done in a dark gunmetal gray, awarded some additional kind of dark burgundy color on the inside. It's a nice looking wrench. I don't get too excited for wrenches. Actually, I do. I do. It was hard to hide. Figure also comes included with welding gloves. It's always crucial, really, if you are welding something, not to be looking at it immediately, like not directly. You really want to be wearing 
goggles for that. I was really wondering why, too. They always say if you pass a construction site, don't look at the sparks being emitted from somebody that's welding. It's never a good idea. It's kind of like looking at the sun, I suppose. The welding goggles are a softer plastic molded here in dark gray. And you can actually see the lens on the front of the goggles has been painted in black. You really don't need to do anything preparation-wise to get Panthro ready to hold his wear his goggles. You just literally slide it over top of his head. This is also good, too, if Panther wants to take a nap. He probably will want to get himself some earplugs, too. Uh, you just can't completely cover your eyes. You're still going to have the sounds around you. I prefer earplugs myself, and I'll just close my eyes. I don't need to spend the money to get myself some goggles, but yeah, it's good for Panther wants a siesta, too. So those are the accessories from a welding and, I guess, repairing-wise standpoint. Then the figure, of course, comes included with his nunchucks. Nunchucks, singular, I suppose. The chain is actually a real chain. I really like the fact that they've done that. And we're going to do some comparisons here also. This is the original nunchuck that came included with the Matty Collector release. We're going to match this up, like for like, oranges to oranges. You can see, well, it's not really orange. The handles, though, are brightly, or more bright, with the Super 7 release than when we got with the Matty Collector release. Matty's went with more of the darker burgundy. Super 7 went with more cartoon accurate colors, more the lighter red. And I actually think I like the lighter colors much more. The blue, same thing. Same idea, really, at least. Brighter colors, brighter blue used than the more darker, dingier blue that they've used. And the chains don't seem too much different from one another. You can take the nunchuck, fit it into his hands. I've now already taken the liber liberty. Oops, let's not drop the figure. I've taken the liberty of swapping out the hands. So once the hands now are already swapped out, just pry the fingers away from the palm. The plastic is soft enough, at least. And then you just put them into his, into his hands. You could do the exact same thing on the other side. While well, I'm spending a little bit of time talking about this. The original Thundercats figure I picked up as a kid was actually Panthro. I kid you not. The option was either uh, uh, Lino, Lino or Panthro. Now, I already had a friend. Well, I have lots of friends growing up. I had a friend who already had a Lino. So, unfortunately... You may have also done the same thing as a kid. Your friend has the the one that you want. So he talks you into getting the, the figure that you can then play him with. So I would have picked up Panthro. But I was regretted it afterwards. The kid moved away two weeks later and I was stuck with Panthro. I, wasn't, I don't want to say stuck. Stuck is a bad word to be using. But in all honesty, I would have much rather preferred Lino. It was going to be a longer story, I thought, but I actually rushed through that pretty pretty fast. So you can see, yeah, yeah there's Panthro holding the nunchuck in hand. One other thing that's neat about this figure is he does also have the spinning version nunchuck. With right now, we're only really looking at just the handle. Now, what it is, is he has this spinning disc that attaches. See, there's a little peg right there, fits into the hole. That's pretty straightforward. And that just fits into it. Other than just overlooking the fact that it's slightly on the more warped side, he does have the option then to spin his nunchuck. What's rather interesting, though, is if you look at the original Matty Collector release, they swapped the colors. They actually performed swapsies here. The one that came included with the original Panthro was actually blue, and you would just attach this onto the red. So really, if you did have both nunchuck, both nunchucks, you could actually have a Panthro wielding both of them, spinning in battle. The thing about these, though... Well, I've just spent all this time to put this into his hands. We're going to go take these hands, take them out of the hands. The thing about it, though, is I've noticed the disc is very heavy. Uh, when you are putting it into his hand, it really weighs the hand down. And I don't know if I would want to really display Panthro with this, with his elbow always bent. With the weight being here, and then the weight being really focused on just this joint alone, I really feel as if that long term, that's going to cause this joint in his elbow to become excessively loose. And I don't want excessively loose joints. Not so quickly, at least. You know, for fun, I'm going to go ahead and put the other one in his hand. And if you do have a tough time doing it while all the stuff is already assembled, it probably would be a best best idea just to put them in his hand first, then take the disc, attach the disc into the top, and then do the exact same thing on the other side. I just dropped the disc again. I keep dropping these things. There you go. <laughs> you can see it's not the easiest thing to keep together. Sorry, I had to excuse myself for a second. I'm just taking the other disc here. As I said, it's not the easiest thing to do because these pegs don't stay the best in the, uh, well, in the nunchucks, as you can see. One last time, and then we're just going to give this up. There we go. Well, see, as you can see, it's way too heavy. 
his wrist is already going to develop looseness. I already have developed loose wrists because of actually holding the nunchucks like this. But at least that gets the idea. You can see that they did actually swap the colors. All right. That whole, that whole part was just really, really awkward. Let's go ahead then just remove all of this, put that to the side. The other thing that comes in clue with Panthro, not that it really needed, I didn't need any of those things for the things we just finished having a look at, is it comes with all some swappable hands. The hands really aren't that much different than the hands I currently got in his sockets, but then he also has some gestured hands too. So if you did want to display the figure with his nunchuck in one hand, then you can kind of give him more of a gestured hand in the other. Those nice looking hands as well. Then the figure comes also with a swappable head sculpt. If you prefer your Panthro yelling, I guess that's kind of really what I'm getting from the, the vibe I'm getting from this head sculpt. Then he has this, this head sculpt. And I'll change it out in a second. One thing I did want to do, though, is I wanted to bring in the original Matty Collector Panthro. Because I did want to show you guys the difference in the head sculpts before we kind of get going and move forward. This, is, I think, is a case where I almost feel the opposite of what I thought with Lino. I thought that Super 7 did a better head sculpt than the first Matty Collector Lino. But I almost feel like I prefer the coloring of the eyes on the original Matty Collector release. You can see, like, the head sculpt seems... Well, it seems like I'm sure the same head sculpt, this actually looks like it's a little bit longer. And I know it's probably just my, more my eyes deceiving me. The eyes, though, I do like more on the Matty Collector release, that lighter brown that they use for the, the iris. Which you can see is a much darker coloring here, the one for the Super 7. The colors are also a lot lighter, too, really, when you do see the figure. This Panthro has a much darker gray, whereas the original Mattel release had a more lighter gray. All right, let's change the head sculpt out. So change the head. You're just simply going to hold on to torso of Panthro. Hold on for dear life and just yank the head off the ball joint and replace it with the one that we want to go with. Now, we only have one other option available. So we'll just pop that in place. I may have also wanted to heat this up a little bit longer than what I did initially, but that's to change out the head sculpt. And really a nice thing about it is if you still had this original release, you just have two looks of Panthro on the shelf. One thing I also, also note as well is they've added some additional gray, like airbrushing. You may or may not be able to even see that in the bicep, the shoulder, and the forearm. There's a much darker coloring of gray happening here that wasn't on the original release of Panthro. I also noticed here on, on mine, there's a little bit of almost smudging there on the front of his torso. It wasn't there on Panthro, the original one. Uh, one other thing that's also changed between the two is the belts. This one has the different... Now, this one right here you can see like the, the cat emblem is more on an angle, whereas this one is a little bit more straight. I actually think I like this one just also a little bit more, although I do think that the cat logo is bigger and it takes up more of the space, more real estate space. So I think it actually wins for that. This is also a corrected Panthro. Uh, if you had picked up the original Panthro from Super 7 when they first released it, he had one of the notable flaws with the lighter colored trunks, which was actually more coloring to the straps that he has on the shoulders here, would have been down here. He actually should have the same consistent color of the darker blue, and the original Panthros would have had a lighter colored trunk that Super 7 did acknowledge and re uh, replace. I, I believe they also sent replacements out for you to be able to change this out if you weren't happy with the fact that the original Panthro was the lighter color. This has since now been a re-release that has gone to stores. So the one I picked up already has the color correction done for the lower trunks. Um, the shoulders are the same from what I can see to the original Ma Ma Matty Collector, the original Mattel. I don't think anything really is changed between the two. There may have been also an episode where Panthro has these spikes sticking out a lot longer. That would have been fun, but also be probably quite difficult to change out on the figure. And uh, for obvious reasons, I can see why they would have left that completely out. As for the rest of the body, it seems to be all the same other than just the color being much darker, a lot darker than the original Mattel, uh, the one that Mattel had released. Let's have a look at the articulation here on Panther. We're going to start here with his head sculpt. I'm going to stick with his head. I actually like this one. Head rotates all the way around. It hinges up. It hinges down. And yeah, it can also look back and forth this way. Arms come out, not, I would say, at a full 90 degree angle bend, but just a little less than that. You can take then the arms and rotate them also all the way around. There's a bicep swivel, there's a single hinged elbow, and there's a swivel in the wrist all the way around. Upper torso is on a ball joint, but you can already kind of see the limitations of what's going on here. There's going to be very little opportunity to really move it back and forth, but you can still hinge it forward and back this way. At least there's enough clearance. You can see the gap in between the spike shoulder straps 
And you can also see the gap in between that and the, and the torso. So there's, a, there's enough. There's enough little bit of mileage there. You can actually go in there and twist or hinge the torso up and down. Legs split out. If you want to get him in a splits, would actually would be something that Panther would do as well. You can bring the legs forward, bring the legs back. There's a swivel on the top, basically where that's been assembled in the factory. There's the little swivel joint at the top there. Single hinge on the knee. Uh, there is no articulation in the boot part of things, just because this is con a continued mold from what's from the knee down. So like all of this is just all one one and the same. You can't move that or anything like that. Uh, there is the uh, hacky sack. You can hinge that back and forth this way. And of course, you can also angle the feet up and down this way. By the way, too, the figures do have peggles on the undersides of their feet. Uh, Super 7 did not include display stands with these figures. I guess really they don't need display stands. Not, not every company has to include display stands with their figures. I get that. But let's just move over Panthro, the one that we got from Super 7. And again, bringing in the Panthro that we got before from Mattel. Similar, yet different. Darker colors, yes, on this guy. Uh, the cat emblem on the belt area is definitely corrected and it is a little more in the center on the Super 7 release that I think is better than the Mattel. But I gotta still say, like, the head sculpt, while being very, very similar, I think I actually do like the lighter color of the iris on the Mattel release than what we got for the Super 7. Super 7 definitely went with a more darker color iris. And while it still works for the figure, I still think I like the lighter color a little bit more on Maddie Collector's release. Though I do appreciate that Super 7 would have included, like Matty Collector did before them, the spinning nunchuck feature, it's honestly just way too heavy. The disc being this size and the amount of plastic that they use to make the spinning nunchuck work like this, it's just too much stress I think you're adding to the elbow of Panthro. I've sort of worked around it for the time being. I've got his arm straight and his elbow straight. But I think if you're still going to be displaying this long term, you're adding extra weight to this. Because yeah, in a perfect world, I would have loved to have been able to use the spinning disc that came included with the Super 7 release and use then the alternating color that came included with the Maddie Collector release and have him actually spinning nunchucks on both sides. If you can actually get both nunchucks attached with those pegs, it's not an easy task, let me tell you. It would look nice, but I think it's adding too much weight to it. Instead, I think I'm just going to display Panthro single nunchuck, bridging the two towns together. I'm going to have them in both of his hands. The neat thing about the figures like this that Super 7 are doing is they throw so many accessories, so, so many accessories with Panthro that you may just decide for yourself, eh, you know, why, why would he need a welder? Why, like, why does he need a wrench? Why does he need goggles? And then you realize later, a few months down the road, you know what? I, I kind of do really like that wrench, and I kind of do like that welding gun that he has. Ah, I'm just going to display Panthro with it for the time being. That's the beauty of having companies like Super 7 throwing in all these accessories. You may not need them right now, but you may decide later on. And those are pretty cool accessories. And I'm just going to display with the figure. Why not? They're there anyways. Some of the accessories are carryovers from the original Panthro that we got before. But again, a lot of them are brand new releases, brand new things that get packaged with these figures. Like the Lino I praised before, when we looked at Lino, he had all of a lot of the same samesies that came included with the Maddie Collector release, but then they're also throwing in other things in there as well. So like, as we did with the other Lino, if you really did have the other one that came in with the Maddie Collector, the, the Maddie Collector release, Panthro, just swap out the head sculpts and you got two different Panthers you can have on your shelf. You know, again, not going back and looking at the source material, you know, twist my rubber spinning nunchuck arm. I could easily go back and watch another episode of Thundercats like that. You probably can't even hear. It. I got a really weak snap. I don't know how accurate, though, those eye color is. So I'm not going to fault them for the fact that they went with the darker color iris. I still kind of think I'm leaning towards the idea of Maddie Collector's lighter iris on, on Panthro. Whether it's cartoon accurate or not, I just, I, you know, I think I like the lighter color myself. That's myself. All the rest of the figure's body, while being really still the carryover from one figure to the other, I gotta say, like, I, I do think I like the darker coloring of the body on Super 7's release. I just think I like the iris color a little bit more on Maddie Collector's release. Let me know down below in the comments section, which do you think produced the better figure? Was it Super 7? Was it Maddie Collector? Let me know down below in the comments section. And of course, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure if you haven't already done so, yes, hit the subscribe button down below. Yes, turn on the bell notification. Yes, keep your peepers peeled. While we have wrapped up the review for Panthro, there is going to be more Super 7 reviews coming your way in the not-so-distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.